All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about why you clicked on this video in the first place. The truth about this $20 metal unplated mouthpiece from China. Now, for those of you who are subscribed to my channel, thank you for subscribing, by the way. You can subscribe if you're not. But I pulled all the videos down that I did of all the Chinese mouthpieces that I bought. And my reason for doing that has to deal with my concerns about not having access to information about what these things are made of and potential toxicity issues concerning the material that these mouthpieces are made of. Some of these mouthpieces I like a lot more than others. This one, definitely one of my favorites. And not just of the Chinese mouthpieces, but one of my all-time favorites ever. So how can I protect myself? Well, I can do some research, like the acrylic mouthpiece, like, okay, that's acrylic. I know what that is. I'll go accordingly. I actually reposted that video. And this one being some kind of metal brass, um, I just chose to plate this thing properly. I sent it out to my guy. Uh, I was trying to do this locally, but it wound up being cheaper to just get it done at Anderson Silver Plating. So they're the ones that got this thing plated for me. Uh, it cost me around $160. Um, so I'm looking at a $180 investment with something like this. I mean, yeah, I'm going to get a different ligature in that whole bit, but just... A $180 mouthpiece, that's one of the best I've ever played in my life. And at this particular point, I think it's in my top three of all-time favorites. Does that mean that you should go out and buy one of these? Um, no, it's still a $20 really, really cheap mouthpiece from China. I bought three of these. They are very different from one another. Two of them are unplated. The other unplated one is getting silver plated. Probably by the time this video goes up, I'll have that one back. And then I bought one that was plated from the factory, and it is the worst mouthpiece I've ever played in my life. It performs well, but the thing just sounds awful. And there, it clearly has to do with the plating. So I was taking a chance at ruining this mouthpiece by sending it out to get plated, but I wasn't gonna ever play it anyway unplated. And as you can see here, I paid $20.61 for this thing. Look at the quality of this box that you get for 20 bucks, man. So let's open this thing up and look what you have inside. It's like you get this foam insert here. Here's the mouthpiece. But look at this. You get a cap and you get a ligature. All right, let's take a closer look at this mouthpiece. It's really hard to go online and find anything about the mouthpieces. Uh, this table seems really flat just by me touching it. Also, the rails seem really flat also. This tip looks a little funny, but I'm gonna show you guys something with this tip also. Uh, let's look at the inner side rails there. They look flat. This looks like a bit of a forehead that's there. You can see how there's an angle change that goes there. Now, I'm writing a book. I try and say this in all my videos. I'm writing a book, and I want it to be in multiple languages. So instead of using standard terms, I try to use face analogies because that just translates very well into other languages. So I call this a forehead right here. I call this window a chin area right here. And this is starting to look very familiar. I have that eye bay mouthpiece. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that one correctly, but that's also a Chinese made mouthpiece that has a very similar look to it. I wanna show you some more features of this mouthpiece. So let's take a look at it from this angle here. Looks like a small chamber mouthpiece to me, but again, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what kind of information is available. Now this is not smooth that's here, Let's take a look at this tooth area. This is something that I find very consistent with a lot of Chinese mouthpieces. They generally have a pretty aggressive tooth. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so to the left here, it's got the balloon on it. That is the Yibai, and this one is the Ibei, the $45 one that I tried before. So there are 
a lot of similarities between these two mouthpieces and I want to show you some of those. So for one, they really do look like they come from the same factory. You can see how these lines are almost in a similar place right here. And you can see how that inner part looks like it was pretty much almost cut from the same machine. It's got the same kind of design that's there. I think that the rails on the Yibai are a little thicker than on the Ibe to the right here. You can see both of these mouthpieces have a very similar tip rail design. So I was initially put off by the Ibe until I played it. I'm not going to judge this ye by until I play it. Okay, there's something else that I want to point out, and it has to do with this facing curve. You can see how short and really aggressive that facing curve is. So I'm very curious to see what that's going to sound like. Let's take a look at this one here, and you can see that is much, much less aggressive. Uh, this 7 feels much more like a 5 to me, so maybe this is closer to a 6 or a 7 according to the auto link standard but okay enough speculation let's play this thing and see what we got <laughs> I want to get this thing weighed in before I have it plated and then I'm going to weigh it afterwards just to see how much mass or how much plating I've actually put on this mouthpiece. All right, so here we go. 83.84 grams. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so after getting this thing plated, let's weigh it again and see what we got here. So it's coming in at around 84 and a half. 84.5 grams. There is a silver plating that goes directly to the brass and then there's a gold plating on top of that. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Still really 
stiff though, I'm surprised. A lot of resistance now. Okay, so I definitely need to adjust the table of this mouthpiece um, after it's come back from the plater. Okay, so I did get myself some tools here. see some of the silver up under there I got the gold plated mouthpiece here I got my bike plate on there like that this ligature is one that I took off of a different Chinese mouthpiece that's of a similar size so it fits this one pretty well it's still a little bit snug and it's been made a little bit tighter because of the plating here so after having sanded this thing down let's hear what we have Sweet. It's actually very strong up there now. Before I got it plated, it would get very skittish, like a car going really fast, and the front end would start to lift, and then you got no steering. Now, with this thing being plated, it is much more planted and stable up in the Altissimo register. adjustments to this mouthpiece otherwise I'm just gonna wind up dialing it into this reed and this ligature it's so much better now <laughs> this is the same reed I'm actually finding that I could use a stiffer reed than the one that I'm using now <laughs> stress this enough I will never play on unplated mouthpieces I don't even want unplated saxophones or unlacquered saxophones anymore I had um, an unlacquered tenor before and the thing just turned greenish I could literally just scrape muck and grime off of it and just flick it off with my hand Keep in mind, I was playing on a cruise ship in a fantastically humid environment, and the thing, it was getting to where I was just terrified to play it. I was like, whatever this is, no way it's good for me. So to put something like that in my mouth, believe me, I'm only, it was necessary for me to plate this thing. And after the plating, this thing is just absolutely fantastic. Now, let me talk about why. Number one, the internal geometry of this mouthpiece is absolutely spectacular. It is fabulous to a point where I don't understand why other people aren't using this design. I don't even know what it is that you could even patent because it's so blatantly simplistic. 
in its design. It's just straight sidewalls, pretty open chamber for a small chamber. I mean, there's really nothing to it except a tip that looks a little funny. Let me give you an analogy, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a pair of jeans. Let's say I go to Walmart and I'll buy a pair of jeans for 20 bucks. I want to buy the best ones that can fit according to whatever measurement they give me. Or I can go to some designer store and pay $1,000 for a pair of jeans. Now, which one is gonna fit better? The $1,000 pair of jeans. I'm gonna be a lot more critical about the little details, man. It's gonna be very customized, maybe extra pockets, extra zippers, a phone charger, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. When you go to Walmart, you get your certain section. You can get your little skinny leg or thick thigh like myself. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll get these jeans tailored to fit. So I'll find a local tailor, they take my measurements, and now guess what? Those $20 pair of jeans are the jeans that fit me better than anything that I have from anywhere at any price because I got it tailored to fit. And that is exactly what this is. That's the difference between a customized mouthpiece and one that is tailored to fit. Usually these really expensive mouthpieces, they have a lot of customizations that professional guys like myself have been asking for for a long period of time. Somebody like Theo Wani, that was his gig. His gig was adjusting mouthpieces and he was like, you know what? Why don't I just make my own mouthpieces and just put all these customizations there? And you know what? You're going to pay for that and you should. So when it comes down to buying cheap mouthpieces versus expensive ones, I hope that I was able to explain to you what it is that you're getting when you pay more money. I know I can pretty much make all these mouthpieces play, but when it comes down to it, if the mouthpiece is made well, if there are no defects with it, it's going to play. It may not play the way you want it to because it's not customized with the features that you want. Once you get a mouthpiece that's customized with the features that you want, then you get the thing tailored to fit. This mouthpiece just came with the types of customizations that I would want, something that is brutally simplistic. Usually once a year, I call the Theo Wani factory. I'm like, hey man, you guys gonna remake that data? <laughs> and and uh, no, nah, they never do. But it is just a brutally simplistic mouthpiece, man. There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles. I don't particularly care for all of that. I want an auto link, for example, that's just machined and made well. That's just gonna have all the dimensions exactly the way they are supposed to be. And that's what I've done with this. I've just tailored this thing to fit my style. And that's why this $20 cheap mouthpiece from China is in my top three all-time favorites. They are horrifyingly inconsistent when you buy these things. So looking online, I've seen that these are now like $25, but still, I mean, you're gonna have to put some effort in it. Mostly, it's not gonna be worth it. Having to pay 20 bucks and then a $150 or a $160 investment, you're better off just buying a really good Van Dorn and not having to worry about any of that. But I'm a little nuts, so I got some experience with dealing with this kind of stuff. So any mouthpiece that you have that you really like, you might wanna seriously think about just getting it tailored to fit, making sure that the table is flat the rails are even. The tip is consistent from one side to the next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do have a silver one. I'm going to do that one pretty soon. I got some pretty good stuff coming up for you. So thanks for tuning in. See ya.